Hello and welcome back. So now that we know the required content for our index page, let's see if we can actually read from our database to show some content here. So what I will do is go to my uh, admin section and go to posts or posts or just click on posts there. There's only one post here, but uh, I can add one more. So let me click on add new so that we have uh, something to see. And then here, I'll add a title. So I'll just say a new post. And then instead of typing some content, I go to lorempsum.com and copy the dummy text there. So back here, and I will paste. Okay, good. So done, publish, publish. Okay, goody. Let me add another one. Click on add new again. Uh, let's say another post and uh, let's paste the same dummy text and publish, publish. Okay, cool. Back to all posts. And then here I refresh. I don't see anything because I have to tell it to actually display the content. Now, displaying content in WordPress is relatively easy. So instead of all this, let's remove this and uh, let's put something else here. So I'm going to put some PHP tags like so, opening tags here and then closing tags like so. Okay. So now there's a few functions that you uh, need to use. Now, if you want to research more about what I'm going to do here is you go to um, this uh, themes development reference here and right there you look for the loop so theme basics here so once you click on theme basics there's the loop so this is the page we are talking about here so it gives you examples here and all the functions that you can use down here so the function we are looking for is is uh, no not one of these actually it's not here but it's there in the sample here you can see it so the first thing we check for is if there are posts at all and you do that by saying have posts like this this is a function so do that once you check if there are posts then you put a loop like this and you still check uh, using the use the have posts like so and you loop through that. Now, if you were to run this, this is going to be an infinite loop and your browser will crash. So the important thing here to do is to add another function called the post like this. This post will make sure that when you're looping through here, whatever you're looping through is reducing step by step uh, so that at some point it becomes empty, then the while loop will stop. Otherwise, without this, this loop will continue going because have posts will always have something in there and uh, things won't go very well. So what I want to do here is, uh, let me move out of, uh, let's see, move out of PHP here and move back in like so. That way I can type some normal HTML here. So in order to show a title, all you have to do is use the, the title. You say the title like this, that's the function, but it has to be in PHP. So I'll put my opening and closing tags like so. So you don't say echo the, ti the title, no, you just say the title because it echoes the title itself. Usually the way, um, the way WordPress works, if you have a function like this that echoes something, usually when you type get underscore, uh, then you get the same result, only that this time you can send the result to a variable like this. Because otherwise, if I just say the title like this, it echoes it by itself. I don't need to say echo. So just remember that. Now, let me put an h1 tag here so that we can clearly see what's going on. Okay, so h1 tag, the title. And then let me put a paragraph uh, thing here. And then inside here, I will put uh, the content 
okay so content like so so if you check that page i showed you all this is there so let's see and then after this i want a horizontal row so that we can see where one post ends and the other one begins so this is all you need to display posts so if we go back to our page if i now refresh you see that we have posts here and this line denotes where one post starts and the other one ends so we have hello world we have a new post and another post right there okay so this is how you display information here now instead of showing all the content a good way is to show the except here which is a shorter version of the content like that so back here and refresh you see that we just get a brief uh, view of the post content and that is much better so we have three posts here which is cool okay so that's all it takes actually now if you go back to uh, the database here the the dashboard sorry and you go to settings and say reading over here for example this is what determines how many posts you see um, uh, how many posts you see per page so if I move this to one like this and save changes and come back here and refresh I only see one post per page now you will need some pagination down here which we will do no problem but for now that's just to show you how this works so save changes there refresh and there we go so this is all we needed to uh, read posts from the database okay so before we finish the video let's add um, let's add some custom CSS so what I need you to do is go to bootstrap get bootstrap.com or you can uh, google bootstrap itself and then click on download here and then you will be able to download the latest version currently the one I am using is um, wait so you click here on download don't download the source just download here and there we go so it's a 1.3 MB file which is rather small so get that file and you will be good to go okay so then you can also go if you want to be able to use icons the icons I'll be using you can go to fontawesome.com and do the same thing and download so there's um where is this where do you download here I think it's in the docs uh, yes font awesome there we go and there's version 515 this is slightly higher than the one I have so you can get the free uh, version there's a paid and then there's a free version for icons at least so we can use icons from here wait a minute where is the download button anyway this is weird uh, basic use okay so it's down here where it says basic use and uh, pro required free plan oh my god where do they take these uh, download buttons these uh, people are insane let's try this let's see free solid plan this is weird anyway you can uh, go around and fidget on this website uh, just to make sure you download uh, a copy of the folder that is required okay so once you're done with that uh, let me go to where Ooh. Where I actually added this so let's see here okay so this is my bootstrap so I extracted the bootstrap here so maybe let me get this one and font awesome also will come with uh, a folder like this so let me go to razor sharp and paste the content so I just made a copy and pasted then I extract to each separate folder um okay goody 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 now i can remove the 
the zip files because I have a backup of those. So we have Bootstrap in here. Now, in order to add Bootstrap, it's important to learn how to add external files. So that's why I'm doing this. So let me put a new folder here called Assets. Okay, that's fine. Now, the thing is, let me explain something here. We're not going to include our CSS files in the head like we normally do when making a normal website because, like I said, we need WordPress to add these things for us in here using the WP head or the footer. Okay, so don't add things directly here. We're going to use another file called functions.php. Okay, so that's where you add all your content. So I'm going to right click here and say new file, save and call this file functions plural.php. Okay, so this is where we're going to tell it to include our style page. But for now, let's just do the copying and pasting that we need. So I'm going to go inside the bootstrap distribution and CSS. The only file really needed here is the bootstrap.min.css. So copy that file back here in the assets. So inside the assets, let me add a couple of folders as well. CSS folder, uh, JS folder, and then finally uh, images folder. And uh, maybe you want to add fonts. You can add one of those folders as well. Fonts, yes. Now let me paste my CSS in there. Okay, good. And then if I come back to Razor Sharp here, I need the JavaScript as well. So JS, also bootstrap.min.js. So back here, assets uh, in the JS, paste it. And then finally, I'll need that font awesome folder. Hopefully you managed to download that. So go inside here and I'm going for the CSS file, which is o.min.css. So back to the CSS, paste. Now for the min file to work in font awesome, it needs to reference. Uh, it has a reference. You see, this is where the file is, but if you go a folder up, there's this web fonts folder. So it has to reference the contents of that. So I'm going to go back here inside the assets and paste the web fonts here. Now, the reason I'm pasting them here is because I need it to maintain the file structure where the CSS file in here, but the web fonts are a folder upward and there. So let's test all this before we delete these unwanted files. So I'm going to go back to my uh, content here. Now, in order to add, um, let's put some PHP tags here first. Now, don't put a closing tag here because we don't want any HTML after the closing tag. So uh, PHP would do it for you if you don't close the tag. So we need a, um, a function called WP NQ uh, style like this. So there's one code in Q style and there's one code in Q script. So what this does is it will add our script to the page using one of these WP head or WP footer. Okay. So what you need here is to give it a, uh, you can check what this function does in the reference, but you need a, uh, what do you call this? A, an ID for your style. So I'm going to add bootstrap. So I'll call it boot. You can call it anything you want. Let me just say boot 01. It doesn't really matter. And then the next thing is I need where the file is. Now, it's hard to know because people can change where the, uh, the themes reside on their website. So it's never a good idea to hard code the path to your files. So conveniently, there's a function called get template uh, directory like that. And then I will add to it the remaining part, which is slash assets. Sorry. Assets, then slash uh, CSS slash bootstrap dot min dot CSS like that. Then I'll stop this. So 
I haven't added this inside any hooks or whatsoever. I just want it to load immediately we run this. So let's see if we're going to get any changes to our text because Font Awesome would, oh, sorry, not Bootstrap actually, would change the text. So refresh and we don't get anything. Now, if I go into the, um, wait a minute. If I echo out this, so I want to echo this right here at the top. I want to see what the problem is. So in case you have an issue with paths, just echo it out. So I have echoed it here. So the problem here is that it, I need to use HTTP in order to include uh, CSS files and images because we are using a rewrite here, uh, a HT access rewrite. So I need to use the HTTP, HTTP instead of this. Now, luckily, there's a version of this uh, function that does exactly that. If I do underscore URL like this, it will get the URL version. This one is good for including files and just PHP files, not images and uh, uh, CSS files. So if I refresh now, you see uh, it's saying this uh, function is unknown. That's because it's not URL, it's URI. Okay, so back here, refresh. Okay, so now you see it starts with HTTP, which is nice. So, which means this time it will actually work. So, remove this and the underscore URI like this, and then come back here, refresh, and um, nothing has changed at all. So, why is that? Hmm. Something missing here. Bootstrap.min.css assets is that correct and then css and then bootstrap.min.css okay so maybe the file is being included at the wrong place so what we need to do is tell it where to include this file so i'm going to create a uh, add action like so now if you remember this is how we add a hook so the hook we are looking for is the init so we want this to only happen once we do the initialization. And then I'll create a function here that I will add this to. So it's a good idea to make your functions unique because in case somebody else types the same function in their plugin, you're going to have problems. So the best way is to type razor sharp like this. You type your theme name here and then put underscore and the name of the function. So I'm just going to say, uh, add stuff like this for now because this is temporal so i'm going to copy this and then create a function that will run at this point so i'll see that and do that then i can now move this guy in here so what i'm saying here is that add an action during the init hook and then run this function which is right here so maybe that was the problem so let's refresh and apparently that isn't the problem. So something is up here. Uh, let me copy this. Let's try again and do an echo, shall we? What is going on? So we can see what the path is. So localhost WordPress prove theme slash assets slash css slash bootstrap dot mean dot css okay so everything here seems fine so uh due to time uh we're going to fix this problem in the next video so i'll leave it here and uh, let's see why exactly our bootstrap isn't working i'll see you then